Greetings, dabblings, and welcome back to Rogue Tower. Yes, I am back. No, I wasn't planning it, but here we are anyway. I can't put this game down. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Otherwise, this is going to be a bit of an awkward episode. Now, if you have been keeping up with my Twitch channel escapades, you will know that we've actually uh, gotten quite far from the last time I put a video up on the channel about Rogue Tower. In fact, there are only a handful of upgrades yet remaining before we've maxed out all of the cards that we can purchase. Now, if you'd like to know how I got between the extended first taste episode and this one, then uh, you can head on over to Avac After Hours. The link is, as always, in the description down below, where the VODs from the last couple of streams of Rogue Tower are going live as we speak. Or you can just keep an eye on the Twitch channel, where I am sure I'm going to be playing more of this in the future. But why am I bringing this back today? Uh, well, I feel like trying my hand at something I've only really scratched the surface of, and that is genuinely trying to win double defense or triple defense. Uh, I think I've got a winning strategy and I want to share that with you. But let's let's not be too, too overconfident. Look, okay, hubris, it is my greatest weakness. Overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer, so I'll just, I'll just be a little bit confident, not, not quite as over as previously. You'll notice that uh, this is a very uh, interesting and very full area here. It does seem that the upgrades you have, especially regarding the treasury and the economics, start you with more items. Now, with this particular run, we are going for a build. I know, right? I'm uh, I'm trying to be all strategic and such. Uh, but I have a particular strategy in mind, and it is going to require that we get a particular tower in mind. We're going to uh, go with sorcery. Until I get that tower, I am not going to uh, purchase any other weapons. In fact, my hope is that we will only need that one tower on each lane. We're going to go for quality over quantity. You may be forgiven for assuming that I'm not, considering how many ballista I'm putting down. But the early ballista are the best ones to get money back. They will pay their, their cost back best if you place them down early. There we go, the Tesla coil. Quite possibly the most OP tower in the game, in my humble opinion. Now I just need to, ah, oh, perfect, there we go. This is the perfect area for it. Everything we need is set. Now there are gonna be two paths leading to the tower in this round, and should this tactic work, then I have every reason to suspect that it would work in much the same way on the uh, on the triple defense. Uh, for now, I'm gonna grab kill them with fire because we're ultimately going to need a lot of fire as well. But there we are, a level 3 tower. Now, sadly, I can't take that away and still see the ring, but uh, do know that the ring is over the entire area, and this is going to be absolutely integral to our defense. I want enemies to enter on this side and have a long trip before they exit on this side, and they're going to have to get hit a several, several times on the way through. Now, uh, in its current state, it's not much ado about anything so we're going to need to bulk it up a little bit there we go now obviously putting armor there isn't exactly the most useful thing because we're not going to see many armored foes for a little while but uh, that will help moving forward we can siphon mana from crystals that's going to be absolutely imp uh, imperative to our success here where we need mana this is going to be a very mana hungry defense uh, for now, we're going to continue to build up the towers. I don't actually care what they're targeting. They're mostly there just to uh, just to soak up the early waves that the Tesla Towers are fighting. I'm looking for a very specific place for the next Tesla Tower. There we go. Uh, I really don't care about this. What we need is static uh, permeation. There are three techs for any particular tower. Although you're buying the cards, they, all cards aren't available all the time. There are prerequisite cards that you need to have unlocked for you to be offered later ones. So, for example, to be able to cause poison, you need to be doing one extra damage to shield. 
and so we'll get that here. You need the extra damage to shield card already, and likewise to do cause the fire dot effect, you need to have gained the card that gives that tower plus one damage to armor, and to do bleed, you need a card that gives you plus one damage to health. Shield is perfect because it's one of the first ones that we're going to we're going to be uh, seeing here. But for the time being, we still need to find another setup like that down here. But uh, I suppose what I could do is just dump a fair bit of uh, energy into melting away health and we'll bring up armor a little bit as well. There we go. Now you guys are going to become an increasingly large problem for me and I'm going to need to hope that my ballistas can handle it for now. They might not be able to but that's fine for the, the moment. We can afford a couple of losses. Uh, no we don't want that. I would like some extra gold from things. That is definitely a, uh, a boon that we need. Uh, not good enough, but that's going to have to do, sadly. All right. Well, we could put a Tessa Tower here and a Tessa Tower there and double them up. It's not the best design. Or I could have one there and there. Mm. Not ideal. Uh, I guess this is going to be the best location for me, ultimately. It's a bit of a shame, but we've now got a split, so I have to have it before this split. There we go, let's uh, break all of these down. The reason why I want that is because with this as it is, a single Tesla Tower here won't cover all of the, the fields. Did we manage to get it? No, they managed to get it, that's a shame. Uh, right, we are going to want... Uh, let's go with more damage to shields, that's fine. But if we put a Tesla Tower here, it would only hit this tile and this tile. If I put one here, it would hit these three. Uh, actually, it might hit a little bit more than that, so it'll probably hit five tiles. And for the enemies coming from this direction, that might be enough. But from this one, it would have one, two, three, four, and then it would be out. It wouldn't be good enough because of the firing delay of the Tesla Tower. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and start expanding out. We'll place the Tesla Tower down here, and I will start upgrading its ability to do some damage. Now, my hope... Is it between the two of them, though this isn't the optimal placement, and I may be punished for this later on. We'll have to have to hope. But a second test of tower there may be enough to solve that problem for us. We'll have to see. They're, they have given us an awful lot of, uh, of townhouses here to play with. Very nice. I'll continue to place them down, but I very much doubt I'm going to settle that one. We're on level 8. Mm. The cost of Ballista is now going up significantly, so I'm not really sure we're going to get there. Ah, Mana Bank. We will need that in time. That is going to be absolutely integral to our defense. Ah, really? That would have been perfect, except for the fact that even a Tessa Tower here would only catch the tail end of any attackers on that side. So, still not quite perfect. There we go. But as you can see... The Tessa Towers are stupidly powerful. What we need is the ability to shut down regeneration. Ultimately, it's not actually that important. Because if you build the Tessa Tower so that it's killing things in one hit, it doesn't matter if there was a dot placed on them or not. But for the time being, let's uh, continue to lay the uh, groundwork so that we can get uh, those, uh, those dots in time. I need to up your armor penetration a little bit more. There we go. And the remainder placed down here. We're already fairly solid with that one. Okay, if we want to go for all of the, t the houses, I guess I could. Not really certain that it's the best thing, but uh, we could give it a shot. I, d I could purchase other towers simply so that I could use them to have cheap uh, tower placements around the, the houses. But the ballista is... I think there'd only be one tower type that would be cheaper than the blister currently. And I, it would only be cheaper for one placement. So it hardly seems worth uh, sacrificing an entire level up for that. Right, let's go ahead and continue expanding down this way because we'll get a little bit of double duty from the blister here. Uh, that is certainly uh, welcomed. In fact, I will go ahead and place it down there. That, that tassel is doing fantastically well now. Have a look over here. We want a little bit more health damage. Thank you. There we are. This should be able to just cut through most things. Now, the problem we're going to start seeing 
is how long it's going to take the enemies to get to the tower. Because we're not taking the defensive line forward. We're just killing them at these choke points. But they're relatively close to the towers themselves. Now, they take quite a lot of mana per shot, which is a little bit of a problem. Uh, we could go for... Sure, we're going to up the possibility of getting a crit at this point. So we've now got a 14% chance of uh, getting a critical hit. Uh, let's continue bringing this out. There we are, let's have a look in there. Let's take that up to 11, 12, 11, 14. And what do we have over here? 12, 11, 14, perfect. And then with the remainder, I will place down a couple more ballista. I don't, again, I don't really care what they're aiming for, but I suppose I may as well give them something to do. So they can aim for the fastest opponent with no armor and no, oh well, with the least armor and the least shield. So they will spend most of their time attacking easily killable enemies. I'll do the same over here. Fastest, least shield, armor. Actually, I'll make this one aim for the slowest, just to spread out the damage again. I really feel that it can't be overstated how important it is not to overkill. Uh, this one can just go for literally the weakest enemy, the easiest to slay opponent. There we go. And in terms of mana, I think it's time for us to start placing down some mana siphons. So let's go ahead and sink 400 into that. Uh, okay, well, we're still not getting any of the dots. That, again, isn't the be-all end-all as long as I can increase the damage of the towers to the point that they can kill in one hit. This side is relatively heavily defended compared to this side where realistically it is just the Tesla tower doing all of the killing. And that is fine for now. Uh, as soon as I can, if I can get them all up to 14, that'll be perfect. Let's have a look down here. Let's start doing the same over on this side. And at this point, it is literally just me balancing them. What ultimately I want to see is the Tessa Tower kill the opponents the moment they enter this field. So if they spawn more enemies when they die, they won't have enough time to get out of the firing range before the next attack hits. And generally speaking, enemies that are spawned from something have less health than the thing that spawned them. Uh, let's go ahead and get Power Surge 1 so that we can at least get Bleed. We are going to start seeing uh, regenerating enemies relatively soon, so it's, uh, it's, it is something to be concerned about, I suppose. Uh, let's go with this one for the very easiest to kill enemy. Start expanding out. I was kind of hoping that this would turn in that direction because it, I'd get an easy seal on this side. But uh, I suppose that might work against me in an odd way. It depends on the, on the spawn mechanics. Now, typically speaking, the only thing you really need to be worried about with the with what will spawn where is the bosses. Uh, the boss will always spawn on the furthest path away from the tower that you didn't just build on. So, with that in mind, uh, and what I mean by you didn't just build on, I don't mean a <clears throat> unique path from the tower. So, these aren't just two paths. This is one, two, three, four separate paths. If I was to build here, then I strongly suspect that Oogie will spawn here. At least to my understanding. Right, at this point we want a couple more upgrades because I'm fairly certain Oogie is going to spawn on this side. Let's see what kind of damage this Tessa Tower can do. Pretty solid hit, and there we go, the bleed damage. The reason why the dots matter so much is because they shut down regeneration. It doesn't actually matter if, if they have any chance of doing enough damage to kill the thing in time, but they will stop it being able to recover its own health. Bleed will stop health regeneration, burn will stop armor regeneration, poison will stop shield regeneration, and early on that isn't as big of a deal. Um, vampires will be the first big problem that you'll start seeing. There we are. Oogie spawned exactly what I was expecting. But uh, vampires regenerate about 200 health a tick. However, later on, we will be fighting things that can regenerate thousands uh, of health, I believe. Um, or at the very least, they have so much uh, that unless we can shut down that, uh, that uh, regen for quite some time by stacking a lot of bleed, for example, 
then they're going to quickly walk past the range that we can apply it and it, they'll start regenerating again because they will have uh, gotten rid of the bleed. Uh, the biggest threat are late game where they can regenerate multiple H, H peoples. The end game critters can regenerate health, armor, and shield, which is actually quite, quite scary. Now, whether or not that will affect uh, the a, a H people that has already been drained. So, for example, if you've completely removed shield, I don't know if they can regenerate shield. I think they may have to have at least some of it there, but we'll see. That is unfortunate. We weren't quite able to do enough damage to Oogie early on. All right. Well, this is wow. You've got arrows in your butt, Oogie. Uh, okay. Well, that is going to be a bit of a problem. If Oogie gets to the base, then we simply lose at that point, and it is that simple. We might be able to kill it. There is an awful lot of ballista down here, but let's just jump these up as much as we can and hope for the best. The bleed may help us, and I think we're going to survive, but it was luck, not judgment. My lord. Uh, right, now we're going to go for poison damage as well, so that we've got the addition of shield stripping going on and let's start expanding out okay now we're going to see uh, shielded enemies showing up so let's pop a little bit into that because they are going to be a big threat for us early on now how much mana does this consume seven a shot so if both of them are firing we're using up more man mana than we're producing so i do need to go ahead and place down couple more mana siphons. Also, I should probably grab the treasure chest from Oogie, shouldn't I? Uh, sure, let's increase the amount of poison damage that can uh, tick over. Uh, certainly, we'll grab that. Though our tower can naturally heal itself somewhat. Uh, you know what? I, I'm not a big fan of the haunted houses. I feel they're kind of mana traps. It takes so much time for them to be useful and to actually even remotely pay themselves back. But if you've got... Like, right now, we're actually producing mana that we're not using. So if you're conservative in your placement, they can be useful. But right now, I think the slow on my ballistas would be uh, more useful, ultimately. Uh, let's see... Ballistas now consume mana? No. Uh, sure. Well, actually, what kind of crit have we got? Okay, I'm going to grab this, and we're going to have two times level, which means that we're already 50% chance of a of a two damage crit, with a 1% chance of a three damage crit, which is actually quite nice. All right, let's continue to expand out these paths where we can. Ultimately, I want the longest path, for boss reasons, to be down here, because it's going to pass the ballista as well. This one is just to expand the path out uh, for the sake of having a nice long tail for our tower to deal with. But this tower is probably going to have the easy job more or less forever. Uh, let's increase damage up to 20 and then I can more or less forget about it for a long while. There we go. We're melting through things over here, which is glorious. And this is exactly what we want to see. It's exactly what we want to see. Uh, there we go. 20 on the health as well. Perfect. Right, let's continue to build up the shield damage over here. Oh, there was still a treasure chest that I hadn't grabbed. Uh, poisoned enemies take extra damage to... Uh, sorry, plus one shield damage from all attacks. That would be very much a nice one to see. But in a way, going for the dot upgrades by mid-game will be a sunk cost, really. Because our goal is for these to kill everything within one hit. Uh, let's go for Thermal Arcing. We've now got Burn Damage. So we've got everything going on with the Tesla Towers now, which is actually quite, quite marvellous. Uh, let's continue building out. I want to extend this out a decent way before we jump over and start extending these ones. Ultimately, I want this one to be the most attractive path for Oogie to spawn on. Uh, I'm not going to build Ballista Towers anywhere that I don't need them. Uh, the only... Exception to that is going to be around the houses. I usually don't do this, but I know I know so many people in the in the comments will bemoan the fact that I wasn't making maximum use out of these towns. Now the reason why I don't 
is that by level 15, for you to make the money back, if you've only been building ballista towers, for example, if you've got a wider spread of tower types, uh, it's a little bit more forgiving, but even if you do have a lot of cheap towers to build, ultimately, by about level 15, you're probably not really going to make back the money that was spent on all of the towers around that home. This one has made back 344. That's currently only just, just slightly more than it cost me to build a ballista. Uh, this one has made 383. So again, that, that one actually isn't too bad. It is a little bit more than a ballista would cost right now. But <laughs> it is going to get so much more expensive as I build out. And having to build those ballistas in order to get that is taking money away from my, uh, from my Tesla towers. Uh, I would like to increase... Ooh, I don't know. Um, I'm actually going to go for advanced circuits because that upgrade leads to other upgrades that I would like to get. Right, this path should now be long enough to be attractive to Oogie. So we'll leave that there. I'm also going to drop down some more mana just in case. And further to that, I'm going to upgrade this to... I'm going to try and get this one up to level 20 on... Uh, armor damage. Now, the, one of the reasons why you should do that, even if you're not necessarily expecting a lot of armor to be there, is every single level up increases the base damage. And with every level, we're also increasing the chances of a crit. So that base damage is multiplied on all things. So upgrading the armor is upgrading the damage that I can do to health and indeed to shields. We're not quite capable of stripping a shield in one go, which is a little bit of a worry. I'm not going to lie, that one that one is something I would like to see changed, but uh, we'll we'll see what we can do with that one. I uh, need a little bit more. How are we doing over here? Uh, let's give these ones better targeting. We'll go for fastest, you can go for slowest, and you can go for the least healthy. There we are. Perfect. Right, do we have enough to finish this tower off? We do. Perfect. That's a 20-20-20 tower. It'll level up on its own over time, though I do feel that I need to improve its its uh, shield destruction a little bit. That's a little bit of a, of a worry right now. Though, if we can get the tech which makes enemies take more damage... Uh, sorry, slow down based on how poisoned they are. Slow Cooker becomes an absolute nightmare of a card to have because any burn on them will accelerate so they will take more because uh, right now the ceiling per second is 50 damage out of however much fire damage they've they've got sat on them um and then that that uh, amount of uh, of fire damage will, will decrease by 50 each second having this potentially can add a lot more to that ceiling and it is a great, great way to get that going. I'm going to grab that one just straight up. There we go. Pop you down there. We've got plenty of places where I'm going to be able to place uh, mana right now. We're producing 22 a second. And we're using 8 a shot on 2 towers. Those are the only places where mana is being consumed. Because I'm not trying to tax the dead. Let the dead have their money. Okay? They earned it in life. Probably tax them while they were earning it. And then tax them while they were trying to spend it on things. I'm not going to tax them because they died as well. No. Be the change you want to see in the world. All right. We definitely want more punch up over here, though. Shield is still the problem. The zombies take a lot to get through. We do get through them, but they are taking a fair old bit. So I think we're going to take shield probably up to 30 on this one. Uh, this lane, it's honestly built out quite nicely. Every time we expand this route, because right now it's just a single long corridor, and so that's giving us a very minor trickle of enemies, because it's spreading the amount of enemies between every potential place that they can spawn from. So this one tower is having very little that it needs to do. Uh, let's see. Oh. Hmm. Well, we don't really have much that we want here, I guess, but... Uh I'll grab the university building, even though I'm not really certain I'm going to be building it, but uh, we'll, we'll take it for now, just to have. Right, this is probably the last um, village that we're going to see. 
the last uh, house, rather, village. I mean, it's a, it's a house, a very big house. A lot of people live in there. It's really deceptively large on the inside. But uh, this is the last one, so I will go ahead. I'll, I'll build this down, but I'm fairly certain that this is absolutely a sunk cost here. Right, let's bulk up your shields. So oh, I don't have enough money for it. I should have. I should have looked at how much money I had first. Uh, we're starting to see skeletons now. Skeletons are a bit nasty. They have both shield, armor. Uh, sorry, they have shield and armor. Uh, but they're also reasonably fast as well, which is a little bit of a problem. Uh, this side held out well. Let's start bumping shields over here. It's going to start getting very, very expensive. But again, we're going for quality over quantity. We're already at 36% chance to do triple damage. We'll ideally get that up really, really high. After a point, there's almost no reason to get it any higher, but we'll still take it further. There we go. I think it caps out at 50% on four times damage, so you'll have a 50% chance of doing four uh, quadruple hit. If you don't, you've got a 50% chance of doing a triple hit. If you don't, you've got a 50% chance of doing uh, a double hit, so it does actually bulk up quite nice. Uh, crit steal 10% of the target's current poison is extra poison damage. That's actually really, really good, but... Now, the banditry options are really n attractive because the only other options that give you, uh, like, for example, mana drops or lifesteal, so when you kill something, you gain mana from it, it speeds them up. And quite a lot of the other ones that affect some sort of extra bonus for killing something will speed the enemy up. Banditry doesn't speed them up. It doesn't make them any harder to kill. You just get more reward from it, with the exchange being that if they do manage to get past your defenses, they're going to punch like a truck full of trucks. So, yeah. This is a... This is a <laughs> you know how I said you know, hubris and overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer? This is what overconfidence looks like. This is very much what overconfidence looks like. Nevertheless, we're going with it. Alright, let's uh, drop down a little bit more over there, up to 25. I mean, that's not terrible. Maybe I'll do something similar over on this side. The bats are getting through. Mm, dislike that. Might want to up the health damage over here then if the bats are able to get through. I'll take the shield up to 25 and then I'll switch over to focusing on the health for a little bit. How are we doing down here? We should be going okay. Now there are a couple of other things that affect... Uh, the amount of money you can get and one of them that I don't see many people Acknowledging and to, to their credit. It's not because it's uh, they haven't read the the, uh, the the info guide the the monster manual sort of thing uh, It's because it's the only place I've ever seen it mentioned is in a tooltip while loading and it is so easy to just miss those but the more different towers that are around an enemy when it dies and I'm assuming by around what it means to say is for every unique type of tower that has that enemy within its its attack range, when the enemy dies, you gain an extra coin for that. But here we go. Poisoning enemies also slows them by 5% of the poison gain. The creeping cough. There we are. That is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Uh, let's continue to... Well, actually, no, your shield is already good. Uh, we need two points over here, and then we're going to pump a bit into health. Now, there is a slight downside to this tower having so little spawning. And that is that it's not really going to get the opportunity to passively level up like the other tower is going to. It's just not going to be doing enough fighting to, for that. So I'm going to have to keep that in mind and pop back here every now and then just to uh, top, it, top it up a little bit. Ultimately, I mean, against the, the low-level mobs, it's doing fantastically well, but... Uh, Let's have a look at that. It takes two shots to kill a ghost. Uh, sorry, a zombie. And that just, frankly, is not good enough. We really need that to be high. In fact, uh, so much so, I'm going to take shield up to 30 before I start working on health on this side. I think that would be wise. It would be nice to find a uh, an occult shrine early so I can set up some universities. I'm not really sure that the university is going to be as useful to me here. Universities excel in that they give a global bonus. So the more types of towers you have, the more uh, the effect of a university is going to help you. I'm relying more or less on a single tower. Universities might be a uh, might be a wasted effort, but 
Oh, well. Uh, we are going to go ahead and get the testicles up to 50% poison. Uh, and now the reason why I want to max all of these out if I can, and I also want to max these out if I can as quickly as I'm able, is because you start getting uh, upgrades that are specific to the, the max uh, dot that you can apply and upgrading the ceiling quite aggressively. Eventually you start getting ones that will just give an extra 40 to the ceiling of damage to every type of dot all at once. And that is a very, very attractive upgrade. Starting to see quite a lot of enemies filtering through now, quite a lot of uh, vampires. Now the vampires, I think, other than the, other than the, uh, the kind of the battle wagons over here, are the first enemy that uh, is very, very tanky, regens, and spawn something when it dies. So they actually represent a reasonable threat because they spawn something that's actually quite quick as well. So it's a bit of a double whammy in that regard. So let's upgrade the health damage we're doing. Oh, there we go. We're now into the range of gaining four times damage. It's very nice. Let's go ahead and take that up. There we are. 10% chance to do four times damage that is glorious have we got that over here oh yeah we do we've got one percent chance to do that over here as well that's that's amazing but as you can see right now the extra gold but the more damage they'll do to the tower is all right we're not having to worry about that i'm not even building any mines i might do just for the sake of buffing the tower's health but at the same time there's a part of me that knows that if something does get to the tower it means that my defenses are falling and Considering how much I'm investing into a single point of defense, that won't go well for us. Oh, no. Uh, let's go for Bandit Truth. No, actually, we'll go for the Bleed. We will go for an upgrade on the Tessa Tower over anything else right now. All uh, right, let's continue to expand out. Got plenty of attractive places for bosses to spawn, but this is the one that I, I want, and that one is still going good. But I think we might actually have to push that one out a little bit more. Because we're starting to get to a point now where these are growing long enough to challenge it. Zombie Yugi, very high shield. And for a boss, each one of those pips represents 10,000 uh, points. So we've got 40,000 points of shield. That is terrifying. We need a lot more shield damage while it's with us. Now we're going to stack up huge amounts of uh, poison, especially because when we crit we're going to apply extra poison damage as well uh and one it well, what it means when it says that is that when you crit you will do 10 percent of the currently stacked poison damage instantly as poison damage it, rather than applying more damage over time it's just going to take 10 percent of the accrued poison damage over time and just smack the thing with it there and then you lose that damage over time off the bar but you know you're just speeding up the delivery. Oof. Nice and slow, though. That's a big one. There we are, doing huge amounts of damage. Release the mangoes. Sorry, Yugi, but your mangoes could not be allowed to live. They were too powerful. Uh, now we'll go for banditry 3 and see what we get over here. Uh, we're going to continue going through monster studies now. All towers are going to gain uh, a pretty hefty upgrade there. And with that, sure, let's upgrade. Ooh. The best music in the game. Honestly, I'm really surprised at how ridiculously good the music is in this game. I have not yet found anyone who didn't feel that the hell music is just absolutely amazing. If you're not if you're not rocking out to this, then I, I don't know what to say about you really. There's gotta be some motion that this this music causes in you. Let's dump this into... Well, uh, we'll spread it between shield and health. We're fine over there. There we go. We're consuming a lot of mana right now. We're using 60 in the shot. That's... Yeah. That is a bit rough, actually. But we're almost at the, the maximum crit chance that we can possibly have. We're doing staggering amounts of damage. We've got a level 63 tower. Sadly, there is no bonus uh, or achievement for getting a level 100 tower. I felt cheated. Not gonna lie, I actually felt deeply let down. <laughs> I think we're gonna need to invest a little bit in this one over here. I, I think we're fine over on this side, but uh, this tower, gonna struggle. Going to struggle. 
I've noticed quite a lot of people also asking about something like uh, a speed upgrade for these lulls. Obviously, in this kind of design, where I'm going very much for quality over quantity, as these lanes get longer and longer and longer, which they're going to have to do, we're going to be waiting increasingly large amounts of time to have any uh, the, the last of the enemies reach the tower and get wiped out. It's very attractive to imagine having a, uh, a double speed option, but uh, the dev has mentioned that he feels that, that would be kind of a failure in design at that point. Here we go, our first university. First university is going to focus on health studies. We're going to take that up to about 10% per wave. We haven't got that many waves left, but we'll do it. I don't know if the each university gets checked separately and you can end up with multiple universities adding. I, I actually don't know about that. But uh, the, back onto the topic of, of the speed. One of the things that the dev did point out is that this game is meant to be more of an idle game. With lulls, you're kind of a manager of the defenses rather than taking an active role in them. And it, it's... If you add a, a uh, like double speed or quadruple speed option, then the regular speed becomes the slow speed. And everyone plays at the double speed. Now, personally, I, I'm of the opinion of, of uh, you know, more choice is never a bad thing. But at the same time, I can definitely see where they're coming from, especially with the comment on if you add an option like that, then a game that is designed around the pacing and speed that's already there may be broken because the new fast speed becomes the new normal speed and everything else is then a slow speed. Um, that, that actually rang quite true when, when I, I read it. Um, of course, you also have problems later game when a lot of things are spawning and quite a few of those things can spawn other things either when they die or constantly. Having a double speed may introduce a problem that uh, those of you who've been with the channel for a very long time will be familiar with and is the reason why, sadly, we lost Spider Slaughter, our Normoria run. Ultimately, when the, the engine is having to calculate so many things so quickly, there is this possibility that the things will skip forward, will, will effectively teleport port forward because of the time dilation effect and won't be triggering the traps as often or in at the right point and as a result might slip through defenses this would be especially vulnerable to that kind of uh, that kind of uh, a problem and ultimately that is what what ended the the spider slaughter run is the the ogres were too numerous there were too many pathing calculations being done and when the trap, which was theoretically completely goblin-proof, nothing should have been able to get through there, there was just too many updates happening, so even on the slowest speed, trying to calculate where things would be and then c try and catch up time with the missed frames meant that some things would just glitch past the trap system. And uh, that would be awful to see here, but I'm getting significantly more confident with the ability of this to shut things down. At this point, we've got enemies that regenerate health, that regenerate armor. Uh, we will be seeing a couple of robot enemies, hither and yon, wandering around, regenerating their armor. And that is something that we're going to need to be aware of. Uh, we've got 10% on all of these. Oh, sure, we'll invest a little bit more. Let's take that up to 15% on each one. I feel that having a single university focused on upgrading a single stat is better than all universities upgrading all stats. And the reason for that is that every time you upgrade anything, the cost increases by 20. So, for example, I've got a 15% chance with magic studies here, and it's going to cost me 320. It would cost me 320 to give 1% armor studies there. I mean, realistically, it costs the same thing to, to put that one over here. But that, in turn, would then mean that to get the next point of shield, it would cost me 360. So I'd, I'd rather specialize them for the time being. Also, there are upgrades, uh, cards that we're going to be able to pull, which will give us uh, a blanket increase, to, like a flat 3% across all fields in all universities. Kind of holding out for those. Right, let's continue to expand out in this direction. Once again, not really caring too much about our 
ballista, but uh, they're leveling up by themselves, which is actually quite nice. This one has now made 816 gold, which is not too bad. These early ones, though, will have made a lot. Let's have a look at you. That's made 1,304 gold. That's not that's not bad at all. How many upgrades on the test would that be? That's basically two upgrades and, and some spare change. Let's take that up to 35. How are we doing over here? Uh, we definitely want to increase this a little bit more. Let's take this up to 30 on shield and health. Armor, I feel, goes down pretty pretty convincingly. But shield is a is a tricky one to melt. What we want to see is nothing surviving the first hit. Things that spawn a, a, a creature as a consequence of dying, that's fine. Uh, we've got enough room for them to walk around for now. You know what? Thinking on it, I should have actually swapped this around and, and more or less stopped this lane at this point and just started expanding this one out because that is the better Tesla tower. That's the uh, more secure Tesla tower to use. Wow, you've almost removed all of the uh, shield already. That's actually kind of, kind of impressive, I'm not going to lie. All towers are doing one extra health damage now, thanks to our university. <sighs> as much as I understand the uh, devs' aversion to the, uh, to the speed upgrades, there are definitely some points where you're like, well... Is it that bad, though? Um, we could go for the burn damage. This will give us the maximum uh, dot effect on this tower. We do 50% uh, of our damage uh, bleed, 50% of damage armor, 50% of the damage as shield. Now, I don't believe that means it converts half of the damage, because uh, obviously it wouldn't. This would mean that we were doing 150 damage, 50% uh, damage at least. I think it just takes... 50% of the damage you've done to health and also applies that uh, as as bleed on top, which is actually quite quite wonderful. Let's expand out a little bit over there. Got some more room for universities, but I don't think we're going to go for more than the three that we've got already. Now then, how are we looking with the upgrades? Let's continue taking you up to 40. I think we're going to put a little bit more length on this one, perhaps. Uh, we could probably expand out these three without creating a more attractive place for Ugi to spawn. We haven't got long before we're going to meet Robo Ugi. Oh, you doing all right there? Yeah, yeah, you're fine. Actually, what are your crit chances? 14, uh, sorry, 13% of uh, quadruple damage. We're already maxed in crit damage over here, though, of course. Uh, let's, let's invest a little bit in armor, sure. There we go. Seeing everything dying in one hit is very, very nice. Very nice indeed. The ballistas are slowing things down a little bit. I may pick up some of the ballista upgrades just so that we can get bleed, burn, and poison on them. Simply because we're kind of wasting a little bit of time. I mean, they have taken out that vampire there, but the vampire was healing through their damage. It would have been a lot faster if they could have just shut down the uh, their heal, even if they weren't doing a lot of damage, just to prevent it from undoing the work that they were doing. Uh, bleeding enemies take an extra one health of damage from all attacks. Sure, we'll pick that one up. There's nothing else really here I need. I'm not going to grab quality over quantity three, because I'm already maxing out. Um, well, that being said, maybe it would help a little bit with these, but it, it would dramatically drop the... Uh, the damage potential of my ballistas, which uh, I'm not sure I'm really about. Right, we're starting to see robots now. The robots are a big problem because they launch missiles. Let's have a watch of you. Okay, half damage to it. We definitely need to get armor up then. I need them to die more or less straight away, otherwise we're in trouble. Because I'm going to need a lot of time to kill the missiles that are going to be propped by them. Uh, those robots, they're the, the weakest form of robot. They don't actually launch missiles, not until they're very close to the tower. Um, just killing them out and about is fine. But later ones will launch rockets when they die. And those ones we need to be ready for. Uh, how are we doing here? Let's uh, bump your armor destruction capabilities as well. 
The only only uh, plus we have with the rockers is they're fa fairly weak. Uh, so we're not really going to struggle to kill them as long as they are still within range of the Tesla. So that's why we want to kill the spawner early, is to make sure that the rockets are still within range for the time that uh, the next pulse happens. Rockets from over here, if they get past. It's possible the blisters will be able to stop them, but I'm not entirely sure about that one, I'm going to be honest. As soon as they're through the armor, they'll be able to melt this. Pop, there we go. Um, let's continue bringing your armor destruction up. We're doing 3,200 damage on shield and health, which is glorious. Uh, uh, trail of blood, a little bit more. Uh, no, we're going to go with Enchanted Bolts because that is going to give us the ability to pop poison on our ballista. That feels like a pretty solid move there. More places for more universities. Again, I'm not sure if having multiple universities is the right play. Uh, it might be. We've already uh, increased damage on shield and health a little bit, which is actually quite nice. How much mana do you use? You use 20 a shot. Okay, that's now getting to ridiculous levels. Let's pop down a couple more. Uh, siphons but I think it is rapidly approaching time for a mana bank if our mana shuts down even for a moment that is going to be the end of this run so let's let's not be overconfident let's learn from the mistakes of past Avax and plan for the future let's uh, let's make sure that we're generating more than enough mana there we go. oh we're starting to see the missiles launching there they go Bloody fast is what they are. And again, oh, that's really not good enough. We need so much more armor destruction. The crits help when they happen, but uh, yeah. We And if one of these died here, that rocket would be gone before the next pass happens. So we do need to really, really heavily invest. And that means we need to do it on both sides as well. Right, let's have a look back here. Oh, we need 666 gold. 15% uh, chance on health there, on armor, on magic studies. Uh, I could increase that a little bit more, I guess. Uh, I don't care for all towers having a 5% crit chance, realistically. Oh, there we are. Poison bolts. Sure. Let's get that one on the go. Uh, but sure, let's uh, let's bulk that up to like 50, uh, sorry, yeah, 20%, let's say. Now, I know that this point here, the only reason I didn't want to expand this one out at all anymore is the risk of having branching parts. But at this point, there was only one direction that it could it could uh, lead from, so that was a safe one to branch. There we are, 20. Okay, we're going to start seeing some nice effects from the ballistas now. It's a shame that the Tesla don't have any kind of funky effect around the arc. I mean, it, it wouldn't make any sense. But, I mean, to be fair, we're fighting Vampire and Hal Robots. I think uh, a solid basis of reality is not with this game's wheelhouse, you know? It would be nice to have some more particle effects to show the different types of damage being applied by the Tesla as well. Okay, that's getting a bit better. And when the crits happen, they do hit hard. But we need to take that up. I'm going to try and get that all the way up to 40. But the poison stacking is good. I mean, the poison right now, the main thing it's doing is adding extra slow to enemies. Uh, however, against shielded enemies, it, it is actually eroding the shield very, very effectively. Against anything that doesn't have a shield, it's doing minimal damage from the blisters, uh, realistically speaking. There we go, We've got a thousand odd here, let's continue to invest. It's getting very expensive to upgrade this one tower now. I could absolutely afford to, to build more around the place, but I think there is more to be gained from doubling down on a single tower right now than upgrading multiples. That said, a little tower here could probably apply a lot of poison and fire. 
Now I'm making a conscious choice between be stubborn and just try to defend with just two Tesla Towers. At this point, we're, we're almost for sciencing how broken Tesla Towers are. Or play a little bit more sensibly and maximize the amount of armor and shield we've stripped away so that by the time it gets here, there really isn't anything left to keep it alive. Hmm. Is a tricky one. It is a tricky one. Uh, how are we doing down there? We've got 20% there. Let's go for 20% on armor as well. Then we'll switch over the shield. But they... I'm not sure that the... Uh, that you ever really get your money, money back from a, a university. It would make a lot more sense if you were playing with almost a complete deck of weapons. Because this applies that bonus damage to every weapon. Usually you have to use a level up to gain just plus one to shield health or armor damage for a single tower. And at that point, these global upgrades, they're huge. But in my particular build, kind of not really the, uh, the optimal strategy, I'm going to be honest. But uh, we're doing it because I'm stubborn. Uh, let's go and pop this down there. There we are. And we just need to bring this up as well. And one more, and then I think I'm going to leave it there at 20%. 25%, by the way, is the point where you're getting to the, the stage where just building a new university is the more cost-effective route. Uh, the, way, the, the reason for that is that by level 25, the, the next point will cost more than building a university and investing in the first point of health, for example. At, at 25 health... We might as well just build a new university to specialize in health and start building it up. Uh, and that might maximize the, the speed that we get those upgrades, I'm not really sure. Uh, more advanced circuits? Uh, no, actually. Slow but short, too. Def... Oh, there we are. All universities gain plus 3% bonus to all research. Now, this makes new universities very much more advantageous to build. Because that's across everything and it doesn't affect the price. So we might have a look into that. We may have a look into that one. Right, Robo Ugi has spawned in the correct path. Fantastic. Uh, okay, so time for us to really double down on the armor destruction capabilities over here. Hopefully you're doing all right still. Uh, not really, I'm a little bit concerned. Let's pump that up just a tiny bit. We're almost to the point where we will do uh, maximum crit as well now. Now, the big concern right now is not necessarily their, H their health pools. It's what they spawn and also the buffs that they can cause. Because some things, when they spawn, will buff the things that they just spawn. So if something dies and spawns a unit, some of them will, um, uh, like in their dying breath, cause haste or cause forti uh, fortified. Which could easily throw out our whole defense. Robo Ugi barely even notices what's going on. It is regenerating shields very fast. We we would need an awful lot of focus firepower from our blisters to actually put sh uh, enough poison on this for it to make even the slightest bit of difference. Uh, but that's fine. Uh, let's see. enough to invest a little bit in shield. Shield is probably the one to invest in first because obviously we need to get through the shield before we can actually damage the armor. But now the Robo Ugi is the only target, our ballistas should be able to wear, uh, wear them down a little bit. We might get through a whole pip of, uh, of shield before Robo Ugi gets to the testers. We'll see. Not even close, about halfway. And now Robo Ugi, because they're no longer poisoned, is uh, regenerating. Beep boop bad. Ugi breaking. U Ugi broke. Uh, the taller they are, the shorter the circuits. <laughs> That's a fantastic achievement name. I like it. Uh, we could go for this at this point. Or give all towers a base 5% crit. No, I think we're going to drop all towers... Damage a little bit for that one. Um, add more poison effect to ballistas as well. 
and continue to expand out. Okay, we're in the, the final straight. Now we're going to start seeing the Eldritch Horrors. They are pretty beefy, to be perfectly honest. Uh, we've got some Mind Flayers there. We'll see some Beholders later on, and eventually we will see Mobile Portals. If we get that far, I am going to be very, very pleased. Uh, but since we're back in the territory of lots of shields, let's make sure I don't neglect this side and lose tragically to just taking my eye off the prize. Uh, we've got a full 50% there. Let's have a watch. Good. They managed to take them out pretty, pretty solidly. Okay. Okay. Relatively confident about that one then. Right, how much armory, uh, sorry, manny, 24 a shot. That's a lot. Uh, that's an awful lot, actually. Uh, the mind flayers are not dying instantly. They're actually also quite fast, to be perfectly honest. There we go. Oh, the ballistas actually managed to take something out. Well, I suppose they are now stacking up quite a lot more poison, so uh, that does help. There we go. And you will be wiped out in just a moment. Okay, well, again, a little bit concerned about just leaving this side unprotected. So I'm going to get the shield up to 40. Uh, increase the maximum number of, uh, amount of bleed or the maximum amount of burn. Uh, let's go for maximum amount of burn. Let's gather up to 80. There we are. Uh, right. Okay, where are we going next? I'm actually going to expand out in this direction. I'm going to make this path a little bit longer so that I don't have to worry about expanding these ones out anymore. I'm probably not going to expand this path any further because I don't want to hit the point where I've got a, a branching path there because that would just make my job over on this side so much more difficult to balance with the uh, the main entrance to the, to the tower. Just need a couple more to drop on by. Now, as far as I'm aware, this is pretty much about the only tower that could do this strategy. And it is because it is AoE. You might be able to do this with a Frost Tower. Because Frost Towers, hilariously, I believe, can also burn, bleed, and poison. Uh, that is some very, very interesting snow. Uh, but Frost Towers do their damage a little bit less consistently. Because of the way that... Each snow particle is what's actually doing the damage. It's not just doing it in an area of effect like the Tessa Tower does. This is the only one that, that does that, uh, that I'm aware of. So, you might be able to pull it off with a Frost Tower, especially if you had a couple. So, for example, an area like this, but just saturated with Frost Towers, that might work. Um, I don't think you could rely on Mortars in the same way as this, because they've got travel time and... The, the, the big thing with the, the Tesla is when it kills something and that thing spawns something else, only a few moments later it's going to do another pulse and probably kill the progeny. A mortar will take so much longer to fire that that's where the real problem exists. Ooh, uh, all university gain plus two bonus to all research. Fantastic. Okay, so then it's now plus five bonus research. At this point, it's worth me just popping down the universities just to have the uh, bonus research that they, they represent. Uh, let's grab you. And I can get these other ones down there as well. There we go. Any more. And we can get four around here. I'm not actually going to build them up, I don't think. I'm happy with the amount that we're generating there. But we've got uh, an extra... Basically, got an extra six levels worth of upgrades there. That's, that's quite quite impressive. When you think about it, in, in those terms. So I was looking at my score rather than my goal. How are things going down here? Okay, so the Beholders are on the field, thankfully, taking them out fairly fairly quickly. Beholders are probably more dangerous than the, the Mind Flayers, in my opinion. Even though the Beholders seem to have less health. Much like the, uh, the tougher robots, they launch very fast uh, mini spawns that... Can cover a lot of distance almost I'm, I'm still worried that we might not have enough room here and the reason for that is there is one more enemy and i'm not sure if this tower is going to be up to taking it out 
And that is the portal. The thing with the portal is the portal will spawn beholders. And the beholders will spawn individual eyes. So there has to be three separate uh, separate strikes before they're gone. I think I may have to do what I've tried to resist. And considering that at this point I want I want to give you a win, basically. And I'm willing I'm willing to say no to my my uh, stubbornness for that. I'll pop this down, we'll level it up a lot, and it will be our backup uh, backup uh, Beholder Destroyer. Uh, let's go for another research breakthrough, because this turret is not going to have a huge crit chance yet. All right, let's continue expanding. There we go. Uh, we got a bit of an armor boost there. Okay, at this point, I'm fairly certain this would be able to kill the, the eyeballs from a Beholder. And I'm absolutely certain that because of the perfect placement of this tower, Killing a portal here, killing a beholder here, killing its spawn here. I don't think anything's going to get through. Fairly certain about that. If, if if we do lose to this side, well, you know, Hubris played the long game. And it earned that victory. You know, after, after a point, you have to just admire your enemies for their success. Uh, continue to buff this up. Honestly, I'm starting to wonder if we really need to. We're more or less killing everything in a hit. As long as Big Brain Oogie, the final boss, spawns over here, we should be fine. My lord, this is going to be a long video. <laughs> I just realized that. I apologize if you've got somewhere to be. Uh, but don't worry, we've only got uh, five more waves to go through. And I'm fairly certain that our strategy at this point is going to succeed. If it fails, it's because I was an idiot. And uh, you, you can you can quote me on that one. I really hope I don't fail now, because my I can only imagine what my comments are going to be like. Nevertheless, I feel that regardless what else has happened, we've basically validated the use of the Tessa Tower in this way. We have for science the efficacy of the Tessa Tower, and we have found it to be horrifically broken. <laughs> actually horrifically broken. Uh, I could invest a little bit down here, I suppose. Let's invest evenly. That got up there really fast, my lord. Uh, how how likely is the crit? Oh, actually, there's a 35% chance crit on these uh, these uh, Ballista Towers, my lord. Um, all Tesla Collins gain extra crit because of advanced circuits, or I could do a little bit more damage to armor as well. Attacks against bleeding enemies have 5% crit chance. Uh, there's no point. Let's just go for the advanced circuits, and uh, we'll call it a day there. Head out. Oh, okay. So now that we've gone towards the, uh, the ending, we are going to be capping each of the routes. Each route now is going to cap. We've only got five more levels. One, two, three, four, five. No matter what happens, when we expand out an area, it's going to terminate in the uh, in the enemy portal now. It cannot afford to go anywhere else. On that note, I know a couple of people uh, expressed uh, a bit of dismay that there wasn't a limitless mode. The devs are already working on it. Has received the feedback and is looking into uh, creating... A, a uh, endless run. Oh my lord, that's what I was scared of. Uh, an endless run mode. These are the portals there. When they die, they spawn beholders themselves. Look at the amount of spam that just comes out of stuff there. But uh, right now, there is a prestige system of sorts. All it does is add to your score. So it's, it's basically just, you know, for bragging rights. Uh, but there there is a plan to add a pure full expansion, but they're trying to figure out how to scale that. The game right now has a pretty pretty steady pace. you got a boss every so many levels, and then you get a whole new type of enemy in, in, the, in the following couple of waves before the next boss. Like, the first one is largely just health, 
and a little bit of uh, armor. Then you've got the introduction of shields and uh, health regeneration. Uh, so you've got armor, ha uh, high health mobs, high shield mobs, and health regenerating mobs. And the boss has got both health and shields. Uh, let's go for... I'm not going to go for that research breakthrough. Um, let's go for... Yeah, we'll go for Plasmatics 3. And at this point, I'm going to drop that down just so I can finally seal off this side no matter what happens. Uh, we'll pop that all the way up to 40 as well. Um, the second boss, as I mentioned, has a shield. Uh, health and a shield. The next wave then is the Hell Wave. Where you start encountering armor regeneration. And also, the, well, I mean, you did have the vampires in, in the kind of the second stage, which do spawn bats when they die. But you start getting enemies that, that actively um, spawn very dangerous, uh, very dangerous uh, weapons, the rockets. I don't really consider the, the I, I hate to, you know, to invalidate your existence, little battering ram cart, but you spawn a bunch of goblins. I'm literally fighting against the forces of hell and the, the the foot soldiers of eldritch horrors from beyond the stars. I goblins. I I don't know what you want me to say. It just it's not much by comparison. Uh, that being said, you know early on you can definitely die to them. Uh, but still, regarding the uh, the third wave, you start seeing the first enemies that can spawn significant threats when they die, and then the fourth wave. You've got enemies that can regenerate everything. Health, armor, and shield. And most enemies have all three. And if you take, for example, the portals as as the, the prime example of the spawner mechanic, they spawn something that can spawn something else. It escalates quite quickly. Um, how you would balance that for an endless mode? Other than just giving everything more H HP, but it just feels like... That's such a lackluster way of, of creating an endless mode, in my opinion. All universities gain more bonus research. We're actually getting a decent amount of research on the way now. Uh, let's start tapping these areas out, if we can. I want that one to... Oh, we're going to have to... Oh, actually, yeah, we're going to need to expand this one out before the last wave. The reason for that is, as I mentioned before, the boss will spawn on the longest possible path that you didn't build that turn. So we can't have this be the last area that we build. Right, let's pop a little bit more in here. Uh, let's go for shield. And since we're at that place, again, let's let's not take our eye off the prize. Eh? Let's uh, pop your shield destruction up to 50. I keep reading the score instead of money. There we go. We pretty much wreck the the shield of anything we hit. I want to see how you do in terms of armor. Yeah, we take out all of the armor in one go. Uh, a little bit more would still be useful. Let's get this up to 45, I think. This is just disgusting over here, though. Absolutely disgusting. I mean, the ballistas are, are doing things, but they're not really doing anything of consequence right now. When we get to the end and we see the, the damage breakdown, Ballistas aren't going to be, you know, uh, you know, zero damage. But for all intents and purposes, they may as well have been. The Tessas have done so ridiculously well. If we... Honestly, we could probably just delete all of the, all of the Ballistas at this point, And it would just all be down to the Tessas. I'm not sure that you could easily get away with just a pure Tessa strategy. You might be able to, if you had a very lucky spawn. For example, if this was the first tile you expanded out in this direction, you could just build a Tesla on it and the jobs are good. And you would have to get through that first expansion wave, though, so you probably want to place down a single ballista. I guess you could possibly just try and tank the first couple of waves until you get a, a weapon like a, a Tesla Tower without ever building a ballista and just accept that you're going to lose health on the first couple be an interesting one uh let's go for you know what let's go for slow but short too we've got 80 80 50 now just so that we don't forget that i'll build that now and uh while we can since we are actually still going through mana reasonably fast 
How much are we up to over here? 25 a shot on this side isn't actually that bad. Uh, not going to lie, I'm a little bit impressed with it. Uh, let's pop this all the way up to 50, though. Uh, however, how much do you use a shot? 30 a shot. It's a little bit higher. Now, got two more paths to go. I'm hoping that this one will still be longest. It's possible this or this one will. These ones won't be, though, definitely. And I fancy that this one is probably shorter than this one. Just eyeballing it, but I couldn't be certain. It's a little bit too close at this point for me to easily tell. Right, let's continue to upgrade you all the way up to 55 and you as well. Now there are achievements for building only two types of towers for every combination. Ballista and one of the other weapons. Uh, <laughs> Amazingly, the dev let me know that uh, the Ballista Plus Radar uh, combination was named after my second first taste, Arrows and Aeroplanes. Well, that, was, that was a particularly uh, neat, uh, neat thing to learn. I found that very, very amusing. Uh, I'm not going to try and do that challenge, though, because, yikes, that would be a rough one. You would have to focus ultra hard on ballistas and getting every type of dot on it before you started building the, the, the radars at all. Those radars would be monstrously difficult to make work. Uh, th this thing is crazy. This is this is probably the easiest way. Uh, this is probably the easiest one to go for. But the radars would be a nightmare. Uh, is there anything I actually want here? Uh, sure, exsanguinate. Crit steal 10% of the target's current bleed as extra bleed damage. There we go. And we've got one more level after this. How are we doing down here? At this point, I don't think we're seeing any more enemies types, so if this tower is able to handle what's there, it's always going to be able to handle what's there. But I will take it up to 50-50-50, uh, just because I like the numbers. Uh, knowing full well that the tower will then go on to try and ruin that, uh, that beautiful number by leveling up itself. But at this point, it's got so much EXP it needs to... Uh, naturally gain a level, I should be okay. That being said, the universities might ruin it. Ah, the Scallywag University. Oh, well. I'm actually kind of uh, surprised. I was honestly expecting that this one would be fairly low power um, compared to the, to this one, because I'm I'm sending the, the vast majority of the forces of darkness against this Tesla Tower. So I am a little bit surprised that that, that one has more or less uh, kept, uh, kept pace with it. In terms of uh, its upgrade levels. Of course, I'm the one doing it, but I, I am surprised that uh, I felt the need to. But I suppose, at this point, I've built everything to one-shot kill things. So, it makes sense that they would be even. The, the volume of enemies isn't, the, isn't the, the, the focus of this. It's just the health of the enemies. And that's, if a single portal spawns over there, then I need this to be able to kill a portal. And the beholders. And the eyes in three hits in exactly the same way that I need this one to. Uh, oh, we've got ten times. You know what? I'm going to start leveling them up in uh, side by side. In parallel. Not bad. Almost maxed out the uh, crit chance of the, the lowest level. Oh, that was just for a second there. I thought he was going to get through. Uh, almost uh, maxed out the lowest type of crit there. Make them suffer. Increase max bleed, burn, poison per second by 40. Is this useful? No. Because I'm killing everything just brute force wise. There we go. Big brain Oogie spawned on the correct path. I really wasn't sure where it was going to spawn, but that's actually quite cool. Um, but yeah, we're, we're killing things so quickly that we don't actually care about the dots anymore. So I guess with that in mind, you could just build with the dots are usually for me there to to stop regen but we're killing them at the first point of contact i, I don't consider this the, the first part of the defense this is really our front line we have one line of defense I, well actually this side has one line of defense this one has a fallback position but we're we're never using it despite all of the the man that i uh, sorry the money that i invested in getting that leveled up 
Uh, you know what, I'm not going to allow you to end the game without having a max chance on crits. That would be shameful of me. There we go. Let's finish these off. At this point, we're just bringing in so much money. <laughs> Everything just appears and melts. And it is glorious. There we go. That run is entirely done. I could sell that tower at this point. I wonder if there is uh, some sort of achievement for having sold all of the towers. Realistically, you wouldn't be able to... Oh, actually. Okay, so you would be able to do it. But the moment the tower kills something, and the chassis tower does its damage instantly, it's not like a mortar where you can sell the mortar once the shot is in the air, you would have to sell the, te the final tower just before the, the last opponent, and at this point it would have to be a boss, just before Big Brain Oogie died, but with significant dot applied to it, such that the dot will kill it with time. That would be the only way that you could do it. Uh, we've got a level 145. Can we get to a level 150? Oh, no! Right, okay. Fine, fine. I know what we must do. You need to go. Oh, can I? Go. Go. I need money. We need to be level 50. Come on. Yes! I'm just in time! Oh, I had no time to spare. Right, there we are. We've got a uh, we've got a an achievement for that one. Defended all 45 levels, 1980 XP. Victory bonus. You always get a fairly hefty victory bonus just for completing it. New double defense record, 1665 bonus XP. Here are the stats for this uh, for this win. Let's have a quick gander. I wish I'd properly been watching uh, Big Brain Oogie go down. Eh? Uh, but there we go. We've got. Oh my lord, the total damage done by the ballista is actually obscene. For gold spent. Now, I'm not sure if this is gold spent on leveling it up. It has to be. This has to be the, the total gold spent, because I only built three of them. So yeah, that, that is the total gold spent on Tesla coils. Still, we did 1,264.67 damage per gold coin that we spent on it. But there we are, we got a win. I was not certain that we were gonna win that. I really was not certain, but I'm very, very happy to know that we did. And with this bounty of experience points, we can go ahead and grab all of the last bits. So actually this, this does make a, a radar run a little bit more possible <laughs> because we will be able to make them bleed, burn, and poison our enemies. But that is it for rogue tower in this episode at the very least do let me know down below if you'd like to see more of this on the channel but uh do be aware that i am streaming it uh, more than i probably should frankly uh i do advertise myself as a variety streamer but there has been a uh, lot less variety and a lot more rogue tower of late but there are also the vods going up on my vod channel they are largely uncut long play format so if you enjoy that if you want something to listen to then uh, do consider checking out the links down below. But that is going to be it from me. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Take care, everyone.